want you to do while we're waiting, take your sermon notes, take it off the clip and open it up like this for me. Open it up. Now this is your tool that you're going to use to witness with. That's why these, this is very important. Now you got one page on this side, flip it over. Amen. All right. So you got two sides. So we're going to fill out the first side. So you're going to have to work your clipboard. Okay, we want you to write in and fill in and check off all of this because this is important so that when you go out and witness, you could have this in your hand to do some explainings and some teaching to other people who don't know the Lord. All right? All right, choir, we're going to go ahead and start. All right, good. All right, let's start at Romans 10. We'll start. Let's stand and read one more time. It's always good to, uh, to read. Let's stand and read one more time. In honor of the word of God. All right, as the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How, then, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom, say of whom, they have not heard? And how can they hear? without someone preaching to them. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Yes, sir. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Tell your neighbor you have good feet. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. You may be seated. Get your pencil ready. Get your heart ready. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. For the Lord has a word for all of us today. Amen. Minimize the walking. It's time to learn and hear from God. The subject on this morning, biblical faith and how to have it. Biblical faith and how to have it. You write the word faith in. It's a very important word to a Christian, faith. Biblical faith and how to have it. It's simple as this illustration regarding two letters. You got letter number one, and you got letter number two. Listen at le letter number one. You have a new envelope, brand new, just opened the box. It's expensive, it's beautiful, and it's elegant. Y'all got that one? Let's look at letter number two, however. It's written in pencil. Can you believe that? Cheap, stationary, bad grammar, and misspellings. You got two letters. Let's look at these two letters once again on the next slide. We got, we said, new envelope, expensive, beautiful, elegant, but we have no what? No stamp. No stamp on the letter. Letter number two is ugly as it is. Written in pencil, cheap stationery, bad grammar, misspellings, but it has a proper stamp. Which one of them will get mailed? Letter one or letter two? My brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how good you look. If you don't have the right ingredient, you are but on your way to hell. You can have on a black suit with a white shirt and sit on a deacon pew. If you don't have faith, do 
I have a witness in here? You can be in the choir singing those beautiful songs they sung this morning, but if they don't have faith, So let's look at two Christians. Christian number one, Christian number two. Christian number one, he prays. He's always at prayer meeting. He believes and he receives. Christian number two, he prays, but he doubts. So he receives nothing. Christian one, pray, and importantly, he does what? Believe. So he receives. Christian number two, they pray too, but they get up off their knees and they doubt, and they receive what, church? Nothing. So what I want you to write down, first of all, as we look at some background and get some understanding, note number one, it says your faith. Your faith. Now, you can't have my faith. I can't have your faith. You have to have your own faith. Everybody agree with that? Your faith is the medium. Write that word medium in of exchange. Your faith is the medium of exchange. If you want to get anything from God, you got to have faith. Now, uh, some of you uh, may go to Walmart and load your basket up and go to the counter. And But let me tell you now, if you don't have money, I don't care how hungry you are. I don't care how nicely dressed you are. You can have your hair done. You can look mighty beautiful. But they will call security. Do I have a witness in here? If you do not have money for those items you desire. If you want anything from God, what you got to have, church? Faith is your medium of exchange. Verse 29 uh, of uh, the ninth chapter of Matthew says, According to your faith, let it be done to you. According to your faith. Yours, not mine. Yours. Raise your hand if you got any faith. Now, you don't need much. Jesus said if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. So you don't have to compare your faith to my faith, but you've got to have faith. Do I have a witness in here? Now, I think you have a checkoff list here. Uh, now, the medium of exchange, your faith is the medium of your exchange, not according to these things. You can be famous and go to hell. Check off fame. You can have all the right feelings and still go to hell because if you don't have faith, your feelings does not matter. You can have fortune. You can have all the money. You can be the greatest tither in this church. And the only one who's going to really be happy, Brother Johnny, is the pastor. Amen? But that won't help you when it comes time to go to heaven. You've got to have what? Faith. So you can have all the right friends. Check it out. That won't help you. And your faith won't even help you. Fate, F-A-T-E. You've got to have faith. So your faith is the medium of exchange. Faith is our greatest asset. You can have all the houses and land and all the cars and all of these things. The greatest thing you can have as an asset is faith in God. How many of you know with God you got everything? Faith is our greatest asset and unbelief is our greatest stumbling block. The mother of sins. The greatest sin you can commit against God is the sin of unbelief. What hurts God more than anything else is for you to say in your heart, he's not real. He doesn't exist. To say God can't do something crushes God. And he, he desires to have nothing to do with you because you lack faith in him. I've said this before, uh, my mother would get insulted if I asked her what we were going to eat. I didn't know why that was an insulting question, but she would get so enraged when I say, Mama, what we going to eat? 
She said, you're going to eat. Don't worry about it. When I call you to the table, then you'll eat. Brother Carol, I done looked in the refrigerator. I didn't see nothing. I done looked all in the cabinets and I didn't understand how we were going to eat without me seeing something. Come on now, some of y'all don't believe in God because you want to see something. But we walk according to the uh, faith, not according to sight. Do I have a witness in there? How many of you want to see something? Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's not faith. You got to trust God. Even when you don't understand. I don't understand why I got to go through this. Walk on by faith. Trust God. God knows what he's doing. Do I have a few witnesses in there? Note number two, write this word in. Unbelief, write it down, write it down. It'll help you remember. Unbelief leads to misfortune. Unbelief doesn't help you. It hurts you. Remember, unbelief caused Eve to eat the fruit and lose their home. Remember Satan lied to her and said, you're not going to surely what? Die. But you'll be like God. Y'all remember that lie he told her? So she stopped believing God and believed Satan. How many of you done stopped believing God? How many of you done been through so much you done gave up on believing what God says and now you're listening to Satan now? Unbelief caused the Israelites uh, to not enter into the promised land. You remember the spies went in and they came back and said, we can't take those people. Those people are giants in the land. We'll never take it. God got so angry, he said, all of you except Joshua and Caleb will perish in the wilderness. Unbelief tied the hands of Jesus from doing miracles in his hometown. That's just Jesus. What can Jesus do? I knew him since he was a child. Isn't that the carpenter's son? Unbelief brings about misfortune. Look at it here in the scripture, Hebrews 3.19. It says, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Look at Matthew 13.58. It says, and talking about Jesus, he did not do many miracles there, because of their lack of faith. Can God do a miracle in your life? Or do you lack faith? Is there something too hard for the Lord? An important question then. Uh, what is the sin that sends people to hell? Let's find out why you go to hell. Somebody said, I know a uh, uh, lion definitely will send you to hell. Lying definitely will send you to hell. The scripture says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Pride will send you to hell. Pride, that'll do it. What about this one? Murder. Well, murder, is that the one that sends you to hell? Or is it arrogance uh, uh, that sends you to hell? Is it rape? Or is it arson? Is it sexual perversion? Is that the sin that sends you to hell? Now, don't get me wrong. All of these things are wrong, but you need to understand. You are led to do those things because of the real problem, the sin of unbelief. When you don't believe, then you do everything else on that list. When you don't believe God's word, you don't mind telling a lie. When you don't believe God's word, you don't mind taking someone's life. All of these things are results of unbelief. The greatest sin, the sin that sends us to hell, is the sin of unbelief. Did everybody get that? Note number three, write this down. Write the word down, unbelief, again, one more time. Unbelief shuts the door to heaven. Unbelief will shut the door 
You will not enter into heaven with unbelief. Look at it, verse 18. It says, whoever believes in him, talking about Jesus, is not condemned. But, say but, but. whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Why? Why? When I'm reading, I ask questions. Why, Lord? And look at the rest of the verse. It says, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So unbelief is a problem. Unbelief can cause misfortune not only in this life, but in the life to come. Is that does everybody understand? You can't afford not to believe. Unbelief will cause problems in a believer's life. Look at note number four. The spiritual realm is operated by faith. If you want to activate things in your spiritual life, you got to have faith. Come on now, write it down. Don't be that lazy now. Don't have the answer and you refuse to write it down. Write it in. The spiritual realm. Some of us need to get in touch with the spiritual realm because we're so caught up in the cosmos, in, caught up in this world system. That's all we can think and talk about is this world. But if you don't wake up in the spirit, Jesus said you must be born again. Now, when you're born again, you're operating by the Spirit. The Scripture says, walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. And when we say flesh, we're not talking about the body. We're talking about that old endemic nature. That old endemic nature is hard to kill. Even when you're old. That endemic nature still wants to rise. Do I have a witness in here? Listen to me now. When you're a young man, when you're young, you, you may look at young ladies and you may have some lust in your heart and then you may take action on the lust that's in your heart. But you're a young man. But that old nature doesn't die because you got old. Do I have a witness in here? They got some dirty old men. Do I have a witness in here? A dirty old man, that old academic nature is still in him, but his body can't do a thing about it. But his mind runs away with him, causes him to say dirty things out of his old mouth. I don't have but two witnesses in the church. So we need to get in touch with our spiritual self and faith is necessary. Verse 23 of uh, Mark uh, 9 says, If you can, said Jesus, everything, say everything. everything. Come on, say it one more time, everything. 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 Now this is Jesus talking. Somebody done took a nap. They don't even want to hear what Jesus got to say, but then they want to bother the past. Pastor, I got this problem. Didn't Jesus say everything is possible for one who does what, church? Who believes. Everything is possible for one who believes. So the spiritual realm is operated by faith. Look at Romans 1.17. It says, the righteous, those of us who've been called out of the world, and we're righteous through Jesus Christ, the righteous will live by faith. Adrian Rogers said it like this. He says, just as you live physically by breathing and you take in nourishment from food, you live spiritually by faith. Do I have a witness in here? So what do we receive by faith? We receive salvation by faith. We receive the fullness of the spirit by our faith. We receive victory over the world. I'm not craving after the world any longer. I'm not listening to the world and their advice any longer. I'm not hooked up 
by the world no more. I have victory now. I can have my own spiritual mind. I can think like Jesus now because I have faith. I believe what the Bible says versus what the world says because I have faith. So I have victory over the world. I have victory over Satan. Satan can't trick me or deceive me. I have sanctification. I have been set apart because of God. I'm, I'm being made better and better because I have faith. Y'all with me so far? What we experience without faith? Worry. Come on now, if you worry, you need to check that off or write it down, I think. Loneliness. Guilt and disobedience when you don't have faith. Here's your life. How many of us experiencing that as life? I do worry a lot. I do feel like I'm all by myself. I feel guilt over the sins I've committed. I just can't shake it. And I can't obey no matter how hard I try. I end up doing the same old uh -huh. things I said I wasn't going to do no more. And look at your life. Look what kind of life you have. And somebody said, well, that's just life, Reb. No, it ain't. Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. You don't know what life is until you meet me. Do I have a witness in here? So let's get down to it now. Let's write these things down. The reality of biblical faith. Write it in. Write it in. Write it in. The reality. How many of y'all went to college? Raise your hand. College graduates. Did y'all take notes in college? I guess that's more important than the Lord's work, I guess. Your degree on the wall is more important. You don't need to take notes here? God's work don't mean nothing. I know all that already. I don't need it. I know it. Well, you will know it. Note this. Biblical faith must have the right object. Now, let me straighten you out. Where is your faith placed? Who do you have faith in? I have faith. In who? In what? What do you believe? And who told you that? Some of the stuff you believe is just a lie. It ain't the truth. Your faith, biblical faith, must have the right object. Romans 10, 11 says, whoever believes on who? On him. Not believing bishop, not believing pastor, elder, my man. You better believe on him. Will not be put to shame. Look at this. Biblical faith is not just positive thinking. I believe it. I just believe it's going to happen. That's positive thinking. That's all right. I'd rather put up with you with that. Some positive thinking. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I believe I'm going to get that Cadillac. I just believe it, Reb. I believe it in my heart. Do I have a witness in here? I just know she going to marry me. I believe it. I, I, I just feel it. I believe it in my heart, deep in my heart. I got faith. In what? In whom? Do not put your faith in faith. Listen to me now. Some of you think because you said it, that's faith. I said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I believe in faith, and I got faith in faith. And God will honor weak faith. Let's look at this. Jesus asked the boy's father, watch this. How long has he been like this? The father brought his son 
to Jesus said he's been sick and he's been sick for a long time. He says, from childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire. My son has a spirit in him. My son will jump in the fire or jump in water to kill him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Now listen to me well now. The man had some faith. He didn't claim to have all the faith. Some of y'all go overboard. I believe, Pastor, if I jump off the top of the church before I hit the cement, God's going to catch me. Well, you, well I'm going to get in my car and leave immediately because I don't want to see that. I don't want to be a witness have to explain to the police what you were doing on the church roof in the first place. Amen. He said, help me with my unbelief. I'm trying to help somebody this morning with their unbelief. Look at Matthew 17 and 20, uh, B. He says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, understand here that Jesus is using a metaphor. Listen to me. Some of y'all can't read the Bible. Y'all take everything literal and go, go out to the mountains in, in the west. Uh, in, in the name of Jesus, move, mountain. And then you lose your faith. Oh, it didn't move real. He's giving a metaphor. A mountain in those people's minds meant a big problem. Come on now, understand. We say that, a mountain of a problem, right? A mountain to them meant a what? Big problem, a, a situation that they couldn't see themselves through. So they understood when Jesus said, you can say to the mountain. So he's talking about situations that come up in your life that you have no control over, but you turn it over to the law. How many of y'all done been there? You, you, you couldn't do a thing about it. Your back was against the wall. You didn't know what to do. You just gave it over to the law. And Brother Mac used to sing a song, he'll work it out. Do I have a witness in here? He used to sing, I used to like Brother Mac. We're going to have to bring you back up. Let you sing it one more time. He'll work it out. talking about biblical faith Jesus said have faith in God y'all see that verse 22 of Mark 11 Adrian Rogers says your faith your faith yours yours your faith is no better than its object some of y'all just wasting your time talking about you got faith I believe the Lord what do you believe about the Lord what did the Lord say to you that you believe? Mike, I need a ride to the Superdome. Pick me up at the church at 3 o'clock. If Mike don't answer me, if Mike just look at me and turn his head and get in his car and leave, I'm standing out there like a dummy. Mike's supposed to be here at 3 o'clock. First thing Mike going to tell me when he don't show up, I didn't tell you I was coming. You believe that in your own mind. But I told you, Mike, I needed a ride to the Superdome. And I told you to pick me up at 3 o'clock. Did I answer you? Did I tell you I would be here? What is your faith based on? What do you believe about Jesus? What did Jesus say that you say you believe? Look at 33C of Romans 9. It says, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. 
All right, you got to believe in the right person. Uh, listen, Psalms 9, 10 says, Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. All right, y'all got that? So first, biblical faith and how to have it. Let's look at first. The, the reality of biblical faith is the object. Faith in God. Faith in God. Now, I'm going to help you a little. Just, just write it down and stay with me. Stay alert. Pay attention because you've got to get this right. You've got to have faith in God. Nobody else. You can't conjure up faith. You can't make God do something. Come on, let's look at it. Let's go on. The root of biblical faith. I think you need to write the word root in. The root of biblical faith. All right, let's look at Romans 10, 14. It says, how then, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? The one. How you got faith in God, you don't even believe in God. I believe in God. And how can they believe, look at it, in the one of whom they have not heard? Now, y'all see that part, of whom? Now, listen to me well. Hearing the pastor is the method of God to get the word out. And we're going to explain that to you in a little bit. But you personally, let me have your attention. You personally have to hear from God. God himself needs to speak to you. How many of you heard God speak to you? Come on now. Y'all crazy. Y'all ain't heard from God. You crazy. God speaks to me. Yes, sir. He speaks to me directly. Y'all need a, of whom? How can they believe? Why would you believe in a God who never said nothing to you? Brother Deacons, did God speak to you? Hello, somebody? I shouldn't have to tell the deacons to do their job if they know the God they're working for. Uh, I'm a, I shouldn't, Sister Brittany, have to tell a choir member who heard from God to come to choir rehearsal. If they work for God, of whom they heard. Hello, somebody. Oh, ladies, let me help y'all understand this. When you were in high school, I'm sure there were some of your girlfriends who said, Girl, Henry like you. Girl, what you talking about? Uh, everybody know Henry like you. I'm waiting on Henry to tell me. Do I have a witness in here? It's all right to hear from the preacher. It's all right to read the word, but how many of you want to hear God for yourself? The writer is saying, and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone what? Preaching to them. He uses the preacher. Watch this now. I preach the word. And then the spirit of God speaks to you. Either you say this, he's lying, or the spirit say that's the truth. How many of you say amen when you hear the word? Amen mean I, I, I agree. So be it. Look at this now. Faith comes from hearing. You got to hear. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't hear that well when I'm asleep. I really don't. I mean, I, mean uh, I might not hear you when I'm daydreaming. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I might not hear you when I'm watching TV. You can be talking, but I'm so busy focused on the TV, I don't hear a word you say. I hear sound, but I don't hear you. Faith comes from hearing. Look at 17, it says, 
consequently, faith comes from hearing what? Hearing anything? No. Hearing my own mind? Hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Pastor Varnado, about Pleasant Valley. What I got to hear? The message about Christ. Now, how many of you are really interested in the message of Christ? That's boring. I'm not really into that. I ain't all that religious like you. Do you not know that this life is temporary? Did you, have you ever been to a funeral of all ages? There was a baby killed on the other day on the interstate uh, when the police was chasing her father in the car and he ran into a pole and the baby was ejected from the car. The baby lost her life. How sad is that? That tells me that caskets come in all sizes. So the message of Christ is important. Romans 10 and 17 says that. Look at it. It says, you do not generate the hearing. Listen. You can't generate it yourself. It comes from God. God has to open up your mind. You can't hear this. This sounds like nonsense. It's boring. It, you, get, you can't focus on it because you hadn't been born again. Do we have a witness in here? Faith comes by hearing. Look at 29 with me of Philippians. It says, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. No one can believe God unless God enable him to believe. God has to open you up. And that opening comes through a can opener. How many of you remember the old-fashioned can opener? Come on now, some of these young people don't know nothing about that. Huh? Y'all know, first of all, you had to jig a hole in the thing first. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You had to take the can, you had to have pretty good aim, right? You had to put it there, and first you had to pop into the can. That's how the Lord got to pop into you through his word. I got the can opener. I'm the preacher, and I'm trying to prick your heart. Some of y'all hard to open. Some of y'all can't be still. You ever had a can that slip? Every time you try to hit it, the can move? You all day sweating trying to get those peaches out that can. And you got to hit the can just right. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And then after you prick it, then you got to work that thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? God's got to work on you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Some of y'all hard to work on. There's been times I said, I don't want the peaches shut. <laughs> Stupid can. Do I have a witness in here? God's got to get inside your heart. And it happens through the word. The word is the can opener. He's trying to get inside you. Some of y'all just so hard. Hard hearted. Against the law. So look at this. Y'all write this in so some of y'all can stay out of trouble. Write this in. Contrary to the popular belief now, name it and claim it is incorrect faith. Name it and claim it. I don't care how many people you hear saying this mess, it's not right. Name it and claim it is incorrect faith. That's the wrong kind of faith. Believe it, receive it. It's biblical faith. In other words, just because you name something don't mean God is with that. See, you don't have the ability to even know what you want. 
you got something that you want to give it back now? Do I have a witness here? I mean, you got it. You thought you wanted it. You got it now. Now you want to get a thing back. Do I have a few witnesses in it? How many of you got the new car? And when you got the payment book, you want to bring that thing back. Do I have a witness? That Volkswagen looking all right now, huh? Come on, let's go. Note number two, we need hope. Now, in your understanding of hope, your English understanding of hope, you think you can just go around looking at stuff and say, I hope I can get that one day. That ain't the kind of hope we're talking about. Biblical hope is what we're talking about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews, all right? Let's, let's look at that. Let's get an understanding. What does the word hope mean here? In the text. Now these are things you need to teach other people. So you need to pay attention. What does hope mean? Hope in the Bible means bedrock assurance. I can count on this. When I say hope in the Lord, I already got the thing. I don't have it, but I got it. Does that make any sense to you? On payday at my job, we have direct deposit. Do I have a witness in here? Does I, do I have any witnesses in here? Everybody ought to be on direct deposit by now. Direct deposit. So I go to Walmart with hope. I didn't see the money. I didn't go to the bank and say, show me my money. I just went there, put all my food in the grocery basket. Do I have a witness in here? Walked up to the counter and swiped my card with hope. I ain't nervous. I ain't even worried about it. I'm just ready for the lady to give me my receipt. I done already opened up my Diet Coke. She ain't even finished the transaction. I'm drinking Diet Coke because I got hope. Bedrock assurance that my money is there. Do I have two witnesses in church? When I get ready to die, I don't have to be nervous about if I'm going to heaven. It's just when I get there. Hope in the Bible means bedrock assurance based on the promise of God. Assurance mingled with anticipation. I'm excited about what God has done for me. Faith. What else do we need? That's hope. Let's get, we need some substance. Substance. Faith, the scripture says, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, you don't need no hope or faith. You got it. I'm talking about something you can't see. Substance here implies something beneath you that you stand on. I done worked all week at the job. I worked hard. I gave it 100%. Do I have a witness? I, did, I put my 40 hours in. Do I have a witness in it? I'm, that's my substance. I'm standing on that. My money, I know, is in the bank. Y'all got the substance? How many of y'all stand on that? Don't play with my money. Come on now. If the woman at Walmart would have said decline, I done drunk half the Diet Coke. Do I, have a I want some answers. I done worked 40 hours. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. Your faith has to have substance. 
What is the substance we have? What do we stand on? Come on now. I'm trying to help y'all with y'all phony faith, your fake faith, your made-up faith, your pretending. We stand on the word. God, you said it. I read your word. You said it, Lord. I'm standing on what you said. Do I have a witness in here? The root of faith is the word of God. And faith comes by what? Hearing. Listen to me. You can't make up stuff about God and tell me you just believe it. Go on just believing it. It don't mean nothing. I'm standing on his word. I'm believing what he said. I'm not believing what you say. What happened to Eve? She believed Satan. God gave his word. She believed Satan's word. Do I have a witness in there? How many of y'all believe in Satan's word right now? How many of us are believing Satan today? Right now and not believe in God. Let's ask this question. How does God communicate his word then? How does God communicate? Uh, we have all kinds of ways to communicate today. We have cell phone. We have letters we could write. Right? We got multiple ways of what? Communicating. We can text. We can email. We got all kinds of ways to communicate, and, and yet we have the worst communication yet. All of these venues are, are methods to communicate, and we have the, the worst understanding of each other than we've ever had before in life. But how does God communicate with us? Two ways. Lagos and Rhema. Say these two words. Say Lagos. Lagos. And say the other one, Rhema. Come on, learn something now. You want to know how God speaks to me? Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Lagos. Rhema. Lagos is. What is Lagos? The Bible. Raise your hand if you own your own Bible. Bible, you got to have that. That's how God talked to you. Number two, the written word. It can be uh, in any form. I mean, you can have it on your cell phone. You can have it anywhere, as long as it's the word, the written word. The revelation of God in written form. God revealing himself. In other words, God explaining himself to you. Listen, we are not gods. We are part of his creation. We are, uh, uh, part, we are a creature made by God. So we don't know how to communicate with a God. God has to tell us how to communicate with him. So he does it through the logos. That's the written part. So you need the Bible. You need to hear the Bible. You need to read it all the time. But also, Rhema. This is the part some of us are missing. It's an utterance. A spoken word. A word from the word. A word from the Lagos. There are books that you read that go in one ear and out the other. Do I have a witness in here? There are other books that you read that have an impact on your heart and you can never forget it. The Bible, the word of God will not return unto him void. It will do what it is made to accomplish. When God's word speaks to you, you can hear the utterance of God, the rhema. You can say, you are speaking to me today. I'm near your left church and say, that sermon was for me. I don't know how Rab knew. Rab didn't know nothing. God spoke to you. And while the word was going out, God was speaking in your ear. And you heard from God. You heard God speak to you, and it brought tears to your eyes. It made a change in your mind. The utterance of God, you've got to hear from God yourself. And as pastor, I can tell those who hear it and those who don't. 
That's the spirit of discernment. Yes, sir. See, God give the pastor the same gift he give mama. Listen to me. Now, not you modern 2017 mamas. You 2017 mamas only have your mind on yourself. But I'm talking about real mamas. Back in the day mamas. When you could be at the schoolhouse cutting up and mama at the house and she could feel it. Mama, two miles away and she stopped mopping and say, Shirley, cutting up. Get in my purse, baby. What's the matter? I got to go to the schoolhouse. My why? I just got to go. And mama woke up right when the teacher got her hands on her hip. And mama said, what's the problem, baby? Oh, Miss Jones, Shirley cutting up. I knew it, baby. You ain't got to say another word. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Mama can feel something is wrong with my baby. Mama can tell my baby ain't feeling good. You sick, baby. No, mama ain't sick. You sick. Discernment. The Lord get a pastor that same discernment about the members he put over. He say, see that one now? He ain't hearing a word I'm saying to him. Preach harder to him. He ain't heard a word. He been in church 50 years. have mercy. Ain't heard a word I've been trying to tell to him. He still treat his wife like a dog. He still mess over his children. He won't keep a job. He ain't heard a word I say. No. In 50 years. Lagos is the word. Rhema is the utterance. Hearing from God. Ask your neighbor, do you hear from God? We must hear God speak to us directly. Look at it right here. It says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? You didn't hear from God yet. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? The spoken word. Reading your Bible is excellent and you need to do that. But you need a preacher to push it in you. Hello, somebody? Sometimes you read too fast. You read over words. You need a preacher to stand there and push it in. How many of y'all thank God for your teachers in the past? All your school teachers. Raise your hand if you thank God for your teachers because the teacher had to push it in. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness in here? All right, so we got the reality of biblical faith, faith in God, right? That's the object, right? The root of biblical faith is what? You what? Come on, read it. You what? You hear from God. I'm waiting on some of you to hear. All right, number three. The result of biblical faith. What is the purpose of faith? Why do you need faith? Well, Reverend, you know, to get things in life. I need faith to get some stuff. You need money to do that. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you don't need faith, you need money. And if you need money, you still don't need faith, you need a job. Come on, let me help my people now. I said if you want some stuff, you need some what? Money. And if you need some money, you need a what? All right now. Don't stand on the corner. I bet not see none of Pleasant Valley members on the corner standing there talking about I'm uh, stranded. And you're going to be rolled over. I'm going to roll over you with the car. <laughs> then you can sue me and get you some money. You got to work. African-American men, you got to work. Now, what kind of work you do depends on what kind of school you go to. Do I have a witness in here? If you go to skip class school, you got to work hard. If you go to school and pay attention and do what the teacher tell you, you'll get your easy job. But you need a job. All right, the result, the faith, or the purpose. Write this down. 
Faith is not getting man's will done in heaven, but getting God's will done on earth. Y'all got that? You don't run heaven. You don't pray and tell God what to do. First of all, you don't know what you're talking about. Lord, raise up my brother. Raise him up, Lord. He's down, Lord. Raise him up. The Lord said, I got him down. I put him down. I'm the one put him there. I'm trying to save his soul. You worrying about his physical flesh that's going to die anyway. Tell your neighbor, you are going to die. You might as well accept that. You got to get that part in your heart and in your mind physically. You check it out. Sooner. Today we got to say now and later. <laughs> like the candy we used to eat. Faith is not getting man's will done in heaven, but getting what? God's will. All right, that's what you need faith for. Look at this note number two. Write this down. You cannot, come on, get this point. You cannot have faith for anything that's not the will of God. I mean, you can claim you have it, but it, it does you no good. If God didn't say it, don't count on it. Do I have a witness in here? You can't have enough faith to supersede God's rule, God's will, God's sovereignty. I don't care how much faith you have. If God didn't say he was going to do it, do I have a witness? Oh, let's look at Jesus. Jesus was in the garden. Y'all remember? The cross was right around the corner. Do I have a witness here? Jesus began to sweat. And he prayed, he said, Father, if possible, remove this cup from me. I want y'all to know he, was, he had a physical body. And when those nails went through his hand, he was going to feel it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? When those nails went through his feet, he was going to feel every bit of it. How many of y'all hate to go to the doctor to get a shot with a needle? Imagine the doctor walk in with a big railroad spike. Say, lay your hand on the table. Some of y'all say, I don't move that fast, Pastor. I guarantee you that day you will. He said, remove this cup. This is Jesus now from me. He said, nevertheless, thy will be done. How many of y'all say nevertheless to the Lord? Come on, let me help my members. You might as well. Come on, let me help you. Say, nevertheless, thy will be done. Say it again. Nevertheless, thy will be done. That's what you need. You got to accept that. You got to get with that. Come on, let's go on. Verse 14 of 1 John 5, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. When I pray, I want to be confident. I don't want to get on my knees and wonder. I want to be confident, right? This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask, what, Rev? Ask what? Anything, and y'all stop right there, anything. Thank you, Lord, thank you. No, keep reading. According to he hears us. Now, how many of you can admit that some of your prayer wasn't heard? How many of y'all can say you prayed for nothing? You could have been sitting down eating a sandwich or something with that prayer you prayed because it didn't go anywhere because it wasn't according to the will of God. So people stop when they do scripture, Brother James. They say uh, 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 that if we ask anything, he hears us. You took a piece out. You took a piece of the word out. What are you doing? According to 
his will. Lord, I want Sister Shirley's husband to be mine. In the name of Jesus, I have the faith, Lord. I have the faith, Lord. You're wasting your time. Now, you might go ahead and take Sister Shirley's husband. But, you go, but it wasn't God's will. And you're going to be sorry. You're going to be calling Sister Shirley back. You want him back, girl? Girl, that was the best thing you did to take him from me. I'm free now, girl. I'm in the Lord, and I got a good life now. Keep him. He all yours. All right, let's look at that. Y'all got it? Let's read over it. The reality of the biblical faith, you got to have faith in who? God. Come on, y'all help me. The root of biblical faith you hear from? God. The result of biblical faith, God's will is? God. All right, let's go on. All right, uh, last bullet. The release of biblical faith. The release. Of biblical faith. How do I perform this? I understand everything you said, Rev. I got it. I have understanding. Now, how do I do it? How do I do it? Write this down. Come on, we're almost done. True faith does more than merely believe, it obeys. Amen. Now, true faith does more than merely believe. It's obedient. This is where we miss it. This is this the part right here. We got everything else down, but when it gets to this, we drop the ball. And that's why things don't happen the way they should happen. True faith does more than, does more than merely believe. It obeys. Y'all got that? Now, that's just me saying that. Let's look at the scripture. James 1, 22, 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so play yourself. Who got played? I learned that in school, y'all, from the children. Back at, back at, I don't know if it was Carl or Clark when that word came out. Man, he playing me, man. I'm like, what? I said, well, go have fun. That was the problem. <laughs> he wanted to play, man. What you do? I got to learn how to play with other people. Go play. <laughs> Mr. V, you don't have no understanding. What are you talking about? Playing yourself. Yeah. The worst person you can deceive is the person you look at in the mirror every day. And that's the one you do lie to. You lie to him every day. You lie to her every day. Girl, you don't need to lose no weight. How you do that to yourself? The scale telling you, lose weight! Lose weight! Get off me, please get off. But you look in the mirror and say, girl, you look good. I don't know what the scale is talking about. Why you play yourself like that? To merely hear the word of God and don't do it is deceiving yourself. Do what it says. Read that part with me. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgot those pounds they saw in the mirror. Forgot what he looks like. Y'all hear me? But whoever looks intently, intently, say the word intently. In other words, seriously. 
seriously, not half-heartedly, looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. They will be blessed. Not all y'all. Not all y'all. Everybody in Pleasant Valley ain't going to be blessed. Stop being jealous over blessed folk when you can be blessed too. But everybody in the church don't look at the word intently. Everybody don't look at the word with the idea of doing what it says. So they will not be blessed. Uh -huh. The blessing come from doing it. Come on now. I got a job for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to pay you $20 an hour. You work eight hours? How much money you got? Y'all don't even know math. I can give y'all anything. $20 an hour, you work eight hours. How much money you got? $160. I'm going to put it in your hand. You heard me? You heard me? How y'all say it in New Orleans? Be at work at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll start at 9. You heard me? 160. You broke. You just prayed. Lord, bless me. I need somebody gave you a job. 9 o'clock, roll around, Brother Cap. Guess who ain't there? Will they still receive the $160? Come on, just use common sense here. This is the, just common sense. Will you pay them anyway? No. Will they be blessed? No. If you read the word, hear the word, and don't do the word, you're not going to be blessed. Let's look at that again. 25. But whoso, whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, 9 o'clock, right? But doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So faith means to believe, right? Note two. Our modern term, some of you didn't even know this. When you say you believe something, it's an old English word. The word believe that we use is an old English word which means by live. In other words, I live by what I believe. You understand? And that's the truth. Talk is cheap. I believe what you do. Listen, you can say things all you want. You can tell a woman you love her all day and all night. She's going to believe it by how you live. By what you do is what you really believe. Come on now. Common sense. Who you think you're playing? Think about it. Is God that stupid? Lord, I believe. I say, what I look like, I'm stupid or a moron? You do the opposite of everything I say. Do I have a witness? So the English word believe itself means by live. I live by my convictions. What we truly believe, we live by. Faith is belief with legs on it. Adrian Rogers said, faith is belief with what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I believe something, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm going to be there, baby, if I believe it. Yeah. If you got $160 for Reginald Bonner, though, I'm going to be there at quarter to nine. Yeah. Do I have a witness? I'm talking about $160, tax-free, 
8 45 i'm waiting on you wondering where you at where they at i hope they ain't playing with me i need that money do i have a witness in here i'm gonna be there ready with my sleeves rolled up what you need me to do Romans 10, 16 says, but not all of the Israelites accepted. Lord, not all Pleasant Valley believe me. Some of them sleep, Lord, while I'm preaching. They don't believe me. They say, that's just ranch. They don't believe my report. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Hebrews 3.12, and we're done. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, come on now, talk about sinful, Rev, I don't do nothing wrong. I treat everybody right. That none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. An unbelieving heart. We suffer needlessly. The scripture says he will give us, meet our every need. He even says he'll give us the desires of our heart. He said, first you seek the kingdom of God. What's first? Seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Now, what that means, the kingdom of God, I'm in the kingdom. All of my life got to line up with a kingdom person. Do I have a witness in here? If I need to get married... I got to get married. That's righteousness. That's a kingdom person. First, you see the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things. Come on, do I have a few witnesses that know that's true? All that other stuff, I will add it to your life. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein, it all belong to the Lord. The, the, the cattle on a thousand hill. Do I have a witness in here? It all belongs to the Lord. I can't afford to get married. You, you, can, you can't afford not to get married. Listen to me. Tam and I were very young when we married. Very young. Some folks say you were too young. You don't need to get married, but according to the scriptures, in the way Reginald was feeling, the scripture says it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Do I have a, a few people know about passion? Now, all y'all who got children should have both of your hands in the air. It is better to marry than to burn with passion. I didn't have money. It didn't say, though, it's better to have money than get married. It says it's better to marry than to burn with passion. That's what the word said. Then I had to call on the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm burning. I'm sweating down here, Lord. It's hot. He said, what my word say? He said, get married. I got married. I didn't even have a full-time job. I got married with a part-time job, but I had a full-time Jesus. Come on now, somebody want to have everything but Jesus. All I needed was Jesus. And the Lord took me from that point to where I am today. Listen to me now. Let me testify to you. I don't want any of you to have the wrong idea, but I serve the real God. 
Listen to me now. And God don't think no way like you think. I decided uh, after my father passed, I said, Lord, I got to take care of the church. Before daddy passed on his deathbed, he said, son, don't you quit teaching school because teaching school and pastoring work hand in hand. I said, yes, sir. Then he fooled around and died, Brother Cal. And I had the job all by myself. And it was rough. I didn't know how to pass. I, I didn't know what daddy did. I, I just knew he did it. I didn't know what he did, but it was overwhelming. And I showed up at the schoolhouse with my Bible in my hand and showed up at the church with my school books. I was about to lose my mind. I was stressed out. I couldn't handle it. And I made a decision that I got to give the school up because I sure enough can't give up God. And I came over here to the church and I told the brothers, I said, just pay me enough to pay my bills. And they, they did that. And I could just pay my bills. And my wife is disabled. She can't work. She can't help me. And we're doing everything we can just to survive. And over a year now, Brother Horn, I've been having these dreams about teaching school. And I wake up and I tell my wife, she's my witness, Reverend Carr is my witness, and I say, I keep dreaming I'm teaching school, but I just ignored it. I say, it's just a dream. And it went on for a whole year. And then the last dream I had, the children came to me and they took me by my hand. And they said, we need you in the school. You got to come back to the school and that one disturbed me and I woke up out of my sleep and I, I cried and I prayed and I said Lord what is going on I'm at the church Lord so I wasn't going to do it so the Lord allowed a lot of things to happen at my house everything began to break y'all know the refrigerator used to break and then the washing machine mine's breaking at the same time now everything in the house falling apart and I don't have any extra money to get anything fixed and so the Lord made me pray to him for extra funds listen to me well and I prayed I said Lord I need money I, I, I gotta get this fixed I gotta do that I, I don't have no other means of making money I said well I'll give piano lessons and one old man showed up and he don't have no talent I said this ain't gonna work this ain't the way. And the Lord kept giving me the dreams. Go back to the school. Go back to the school. And I'm ignoring it. Then the other day, it got the best of me. And I was in the yard by myself praying. I said, Lord, now, you got to speak to me now. My back against the wall, I don't know what to do. I need help. And I could hear... Reverend Carl preaching, talking about Ananias on one end and Paul on the other end. And God spoke to Paul, told him to go see Ananias. Listen to me. He told Ananias, you go see Paul. Do y'all hear me? Then he said, God don't speak to us with a lot of noise. God speak to us through a small quiet whisper now I'm hearing this in the yard Lord putting all this in my, I'm walking back and forth and I'm praying and I said I'm going to turn it over to the Lord I, I got a book I went sat in the chair and I began to read about the Holy Spirit and the Lord said call Trish I heard him in my voice call Trish I picked the phone up out of my pocket. It was in my top pocket. And I went to dial Trish number, and I said, that was just me. That wasn't the Lord. That was my voice. I said that. I put the phone back in my pocket, grabbed my book, and the phone rang. I looked at the phone. Trish! I was scared to answer. 
Now I'm telling y'all, now I'm telling y'all the Holy Spirit is real. Y'all don't know. And it was Trish. I answered the phone and the very first words out of her mouth was, cousin, you are not going to believe this. The Lord made her say you're not going to believe it. She said, the seventh grade teacher just quit. You want this job? I said, Trish, that was the Lord. And she said, didn't the Lord say Ananias was on one end and Paul on the other? I said, oh, God, I want to hang up on you now. God was already working on it while I was walking in the yard praying. The Lord already provided the job for me. Now the Lord said, now, I need you to witness like you did at Carver. You witness at Clark, you witness at Landry, and many of my children are saved because of it. Now you go back to the school, and while you're there, I'll give you a little change to fix your house up. Do I have a witness? Do y'all understand how God works? Some of y'all suffering for nothing. Call on the name of the Lord. He's able. He's able to make a way out of no way. He can do it. He'll provide. I'm telling you now. I had five children and people started ribbing me. We say ribbing. I don't know what they say today. Some of y'all say played a dozen. Started telling me all kind of stuff. You ain't going to make it. Y'all pregnant again. Uh, all of that. So it, it got to me. And I went and sat down with Grandma. Had it. I said, Grandma, you had eight children. Nine children. And I said, I don't know what to do. I said, my wife pregnant again. She said, baby. It takes just the same amount to feed one as it does to feed nine. Now, y'all mama said this, y'all. She said, look at mine, all of them fat. She said, baby, God is able. She said, don't you believe a word those people say. She said, what the Bible says. I said, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. She said, believe God and don't believe nobody else. All five of my children went to college. Two of them had master degree. All of them had their own house. Do I have a witness? They got money in the bank more than daddy. God is able. And they're right here in God's house right now. Ray train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. God is able. God is able. Some of y'all crying for nothing. You need to turn it over. Talking about faith. Have biblical faith. Believe the word of God. Hear the word of God. And God will make a way for you. And he'll bless you. Be a doer of his holy word.